today to talk about the clover cover crop we have here at this farm. Once we have that initial $20 an acre establishment cost, if we'll wait until this AU robin will become physiologically mature enough that we can go ahead and terminate it mid-April, and when I say that, that means the seed are mature enough or viable enough that they'll lay there until about September, October, and this crop will start coming up again. And we don't have the added expense of coming in and putting in a cover crop every year where we have got this clover established. In clover, um, when we're looking at it, as far as residue, the amount of residue in the field that uh, can provide some weed suppression, can uh, help with our moisture holding capacity, um, can also help um, keep the soils a little cooler. Um, what we look for in a cover crop is something that'll hold up and will be there um, through at least the middle part of the summer. We're, when we're gonna terminate this cover crop, it's physiologically mature, and so um, you just build up the lignans in it, and and uh, this thing, this uh, clover cover crop won't melt on you, or maybe a term we use won't go away real fast. And you can see when it does fall down, you get a, a complete coverage of the soil. You know, the only place we're really gonna have open in a good stand of clover is where we come through with our uh, strip-till rig, open up a little area, put the seed in and close it back up. Here you can see the clover uh, that reseeded this last fall and has come up and we got a real good stand of that. That and it's real uh, uh, thick. That's how you like it. But this is what it's all about to me right here, this residue on the ground. We can see this, uh, this corn stover, these corn cobs, the leaves from the corn that's left over uh, from last year's corn crop. And you can see this residue built up on the soil surface. And then, you know, through the years we had farmers say, well, this is trash farming. And, and uh, that was kind of a way to refer to consultation, conservation tillage. But anyway, we finding out that this trash is really what's so beneficial to us. As this uh, uh, residue breaks down, this is where we get the buildup of our organic matter and our organic carbon. Not only uh, does it build our soil quality, uh, but it also, this mat on, on the soil right here, you can see it uh, suppresses the weeds uh, that may be coming up, but it also holds uh, moisture in the soil too. Here in South Georgia, we, just, we go through extended droughts and we need all the help we can keeping moisture in the field and this just uh, is just a tremendous benefit to our growers for uh, water retention. We also have got uh, just organic matter built up in this soil from, from years of conservation tillage. Uh, I really like the color of this soil right here. It's a little wet right now, but uh, as you can see, uh, those soil aggregates are holding this soil uh, together and, and that's really important. It really helps the tilt of the soil and uh, the benefit of that is the equipment uh, running through this. When you strip through this, it uh, makes it easier for our equipment to run. These roots, organic matter built up in the soil, just really help our soil quality and uh, which in turn helps our crop production. You know, before we get on a bandwagon and start touting um, something as a cover crop, you know, we want to be careful and kind of ease into it. And nematodes was a, a big concern. So what we did is we came in and we monitored um, starting this time of year, pulling nematode samples, pulled them monthly through the growing season and all the way through harvest. Um, the growers that have followed cotton, I mean, excuse me, have followed clover with their cotton or the peanut crops, corn crops, we have not seen at this point in time any added nematode pressure. Yeah, one thing we worried about in the beginning, you know, you have all this organic matter, all this green material out here, and cutworms would come to the forefront. You know, you'd think, well, cutworms. And uh, what we do with cutworms is we just um, band the pyrethroid to prevent for them. So cutworms haven't been a problem for us in the because we've used a preventive. Um, one thing that we do see as far as insects go is a tremendous amount of beneficials this time of year and lady beetles being the, the main beneficial. Had uh, Dr. Glenn Tillman, um, she did a lot of research with stink bugs. 
to see if this would be a nursery for stink bugs in early season stink bug pressure. Found no increase in stink bug pressure following a clover cover crop. Okay, is, is there an issue with weeds? Um, as you can see right here, um, where I'm at now, the, the, the only plant material that is here is the clover. Um, hasn't been any pre-emerge herbicide put out. We hadn't treated anything post-emerge. Um, we do find that uh, we'll have, probably our main problem would be our wild radish. Um, if we have a wild radish problem, um, we go into that field knowing that first year that um, we're just gonna live with it and we're gonna terminate that wild radish um, when we terminate this, this clover. But what we find in the subsequent year or, the, or, or the, the following year is that this clover starts germinating, say late September, October, and it's beating up the, the wild radish, which has been our main um, weed or competitor in it. And when I say beating it up, it's germinating, growing, and then it pretty much just shades out the wild turnips. And, and over a three or four year period, um, clover becomes the dominant um, plant species this time of year. What we found through research and, and, and we get um, a lot of good information on the clovers, we're fixing up to 125 to 150 pounds of nitrogen and about half of that being readily available the next spring, summer growing season. But one of the last hurdles for me personally as a county agent making recommendations on, on nutrients um, was can we have the confidence that that nitrogen is out there and is available um, where we've gained that confidence is just actually reducing our amount of nitrogen going into the um, growing season. In, in corn, um, we took a really big step last year and reduced our nitrogen application by 50%, which that's a big deal in corn production. And in this particular field that I'm standing in, as far as I know, it was our highest yielding field of corn in Turner County last year. And then with cotton, um, this will actually, this upcoming year be our third year that we're, we're talking about it and doing it. Um, cotton production of 12, 13, 1400 pounds with only 30 units of nitrogen compared to where we'd be recommending applying a commercial application of nitrogen, commercial fertilizer of that 100 to 125 pounds. So we've gained some confidence just from on-farm experience. Grain sorghum, um, we've grown some 60, 70 bushel grain sorghum with no nitrogen application. So it's there, we just gotta have, take that leap of faith or step out there and know that it's available.